So this chapter is basically, um, as we see, um, chapter five, right, of the book. Correct. Uh, line. And the data, um, the chapter basically discusses how we can use the data, our data, to do some kind of uh, data clearing and exploration. Um, of course, when he said that data scrubbing also, uh, he meant like how we can use like modeling the data um, via command line. So that's basically the essence of the chapter and uh, the chapter at the end, it basically uses some tools like grep. How do you say this one? I don't know, AWK, how do you say it? <laughs> um, Which one, uh, Shamsuddin? AWK. AWK, yeah. Auk. Auk. Okay. Auk. Yeah, it was, a, it was quite a thing about, uh, I don't know, like, I think a lot of yeah. people that did, uh, like, what is that, Perl and PHP and all yeah, that. Yes. I mean, not Perl, sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's um, the manager chat like uh, these are some of the tools that one can use to basically do some such kind of um, scrubbing the data, explore the data. For example, grab, you can use grab like to basically uh, analyze, I mean, subset some data, you know, use some kind of uh, uh, complex uh, stuff with that. So that's basically what the chapter is. Um, but we also may mention that you can do the same thing with command line using multiple commands. So it's more or less like the way we have in R that you can use different things to achieve the same thing. So also in the command line, for example, you can do some the same thing with grep and you can do with R. So it's just matter of style, yeah. So this is the overview of the chapter. He discussed about how you can convert data from one format to another and stuff like that. So let's look at the first thing. Um, we, as we know, we have our data and uh, let me see. Um, so basically here, this is the chapter five. I already enter into the chapter five. Um, these are the stuff inside the folder, chapter five, Alice, um, Iris. Yeah, these are some of the stuff. And we will basically use this content of the chapter to see some stuff. So the first thing he discusses is transformations. Um, what he meant by that is like, um, uh, you can basically transform your data, given the data in one form, uh, to transform it into another, uh, basically by maybe chaining uh, a lot of stuff. The data is in one format, and you can transform it uh, into another format, for example, using chaining operation to chain it from here to another one. So the first example here we have is this. Um, if we look at the this... Uh, Okay, um, let's go back. So here um, we want to basically try to filter some words into this file, fizzbuzz.py, but this file is not generally in our, in the, uh, where we are now is inside chapter four. So let's go back so, to- So something, what does SEQ do as a command? Uh, okay, so what SQ do? Ah, it's look? like a sequence. Okay, okay, got yeah. it. Just so generating. If, um, if we got this, um, this SQ is this is output uh, sequence of numbers to the output. Basically, sequence mm -hmm. of numbers: one, two, mm -hmm. three, four, five, something like that. So this is what it does. So um, it sequence from one to ten. Um, if, for example, uh, um, so got you it. can. Also uh, every third number, ah, so got it, got it, got it. if I see sequence of five to 20, this what this will give me, for example, if I use this. Yeah. Um, so it's not a random week. sequence. It's not a random yes. sequence. It's Yes, yes, yes. So this is uh, what this does. So what we are trying to do here is we want to, uh, now the first thing we want to generate um, um list of 100 numbers. Um, um, after generating this list, uh, this okay. After generating list of one hundred, as we see here, um, then we need to do this. So this is a file called Facebook. Um, what this basically does is that okay. Let me put it to the end. The piping here is the redirection, so it's basically redirecting it to that output. Yes, exactly. So here we are using this. 
So basically what we are using is that um, if we can see here, as I said, seek 100, it generating sequence of numbers. So here we have one, two, right? But inside this file, this sequence, this first in generate one, 100, 100 sequence, one, two, three, four, up to 100. Uh, okay, let me use this only, seek 100. So you can see we have our sequence of numbers, 100, um, from one, two, three, four. But um, what we want is that inside this file, there is sequence of numbers as well with words. So let's look at it. Um, um, data. Oh, no, 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 let me show it there. Um, I'm inside the data here. Okay. CD, oh, this one. Um, uh, so if we look at this, um, we have this FizzBoss PY. So let me call the, um, this PY. Hmm. So if you look at this is a file, Facebook PY, there are some word in it. Um, you can see here we have Facebook, non, non, fees, fees, something like that. So what we are trying to do here is that um, um, this operation. <laughs> Let me read it from the beginning. So we have this. No problem. So they're trying to combine numbers and letters, Ashan. Yes. So then it's basically. Exactly. exactly. So if we this and now uh, trim this one. So if you look at this one in the third position, we have fees. So that is where we have fees. Um, here we have booze. We have wherever that is not existent in this file, it's not replaced here. So this is basically what's trying to do here is that. Um, we can now use grep to basically count the number of occurrence. So here we can see there is fleas, there is fleas, there is balls, there is fleas. So what we want to do now is we want to use- also, then, Did it replace the number three with fizz? How did it do that? Which one? You saw what? Has it replaced the number three with fizz? Yeah. Because so... you see five and six, how did you, how did you overwrite it positionally like that? Uh, yes. Does it do it normally, like as a normal function? Yeah. So. Um, it, no, so if you look at this, uh, let's see this. So what this T is, so if we look at this, um, TDR, T, so, so first here, it, uh, T will uh, put something to standard output. And um, here, FD sequence, if we look at them here, you define it. So, yeah, so first you obtain by generating the sequence and write it to this. So every seek, now we generate the data. And what is happening here is that um, seek, we have this, but we call this file. So this file, wherever we, it's a sequence of uh, characters as I showed before. So wherever it does not have three, it has three, it will input with this one. Um, I think uh, your question is, how is it placing this automatically in this position? Is that correct? Exactly, exactly. Like, see, you notice it's in position three, five, six, like that. Yes. So um, I, I remember what this. Uh... Yeah. So if you look at this one, uh, we have done the first hundred item of this sequence um, and they would like to be like that. So uh, this, how open the word, this appeared using the bar chart. So this what please please um please and think i'm not sure how the uh, i forgot actually how they replace it but the main idea i think uh, from the next step um is just trying to count the number of no all... problem Shamsuddin. maybe he hasn't covered that so yeah 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 I think, yeah we will understand it maybe i think later because i remember how i tried to understand it and i think i found out um, but yeah, let's continue. No problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, please. 
I was okay. not sure if it's something I'm missing, so no problem. Yeah. So the main idea he wants is like now he has a file and he wants to count the numbers in each of these stuff. So he wants to use grape two um, to basically use it to count the numbers. So here, this is what he does. So you remember, you can see here, we output the results here into this file. It means now we have this file, FGC, and we use trim to just show the top, right? So if we look at this here, LS, um, we can see we will have this file called FB, the sick, which is here. Now we want to use the content. This FB, the sick now contains this whatsoever here. Now we want to count the occurrence here. So he, that is why here they want to use grape. So using this grape here, now we use grape, fees, and occurrence, check the occurrence of this either word and this um, from this file. So this is what this is doing. And um, we sort it. And now here um, we sort unique and, you know, and put the result here. Right, so here, if we look at our files, now we will see this FV, the CNT, right? And this basically, as I said, it count the grave. So here, if you look at it here, uh, he explained what grave is doing. We know what grave is. Um, this, uh, where we have this sort, it sort them, for example, 27, 14, 16 to the um, numbers. And unique is basically trying to show us like the unique one among them, right? So this is it. And now if we look at the file, if we look at the file, we can see here we have um, 27, 14, something like this, right? Um, so that nice. is, yeah. So that's how he tried, just trying to work with the file and see how it works. But the main idea he wants is to float, uh, maybe graph after trying to work with this, yeah. So here you can see this regular expression also match fizz boost. Um, so the regular expression here, because we don't uh, uh, specifically define, so it matches this. Using the sort is common way to count lines um, using descending order. It is the minus C that add the count. So here the uh, minus C unique, find the unique minus C, add the count, and now do that. So right, so this is the uh, what he does. Um, but you can see here, uh, this is just a file and um, we want to plot it. But uh, what he said is that the next step it will be to visualize the count user rush, which is basically a command that can be used to visualize um, content file. However, this command rush only works with CSV file format, but this is not a CSV, right? It's not a CSV. So he wants to change this file to CSV. Now, what he does basically is that, uh, let me copy it here. Explain. So, if we look at this, um, this then you yes. don't need to install any separate libraries or drivers for AWK. How is uh, how is he able to use that command? Did he have to install any? I think Which, it's coming in the Docker environment. AWK. Yes, exactly. Exactly, it's coming in the Docker environment. Um, ah. but but um, AWK is AWK is like if is, they just call it programming language. So yeah. if if you look at this on AWK, um, no, I have used AWK as a standalone uh, tool, but I didn't know uh -huh. how he had packaged it here. So yeah, okay, no worries. Yeah, so it's inside our um, Docker. So um, I didn't even do anything regarding that. Oh, okay, you have used it before. <laughs> yeah, it's like really like almost like 20 years back, I think. What? Was, well, I don't know, this, this is my first time. Well, it's one of the standard Unix uh, things, yeah. you know, like I think uh, tools, which people mm -hmm. uh, like O'Reilly has so many books on AWK because it's so popular among Unix command. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. right. So we can see here, this is a file. So we want to change this file now to CSV. Now how we can do that. So our uh, OAWK can do that is somehow a programming language. So what this doing here is that um, begin just as programming language, 
print, we want to print something, but in the first thing in the first column is value and the second column is called count. Now, this is something you can see value and count. But if you look at this, we can see here, the count is first. And the second thing here is basically the uh, value, which is fees, how many we have. So here you can see print, but instead here to put print one, if we say print one, it means it is 2714 that will be in this first column, but we are ordering. So here we say print two. So what is in the second column, which is fees. So fees will be under the value here. Can you see that uh, this? And one, which is this, the first thing here will be in the now second column. So here, first column, second column. Uh, this is the first column name, second column name, and now so, uh, store the result in what is called fb.csv. It's interesting that they have a, that he you have to enclose the comma and quotes. Do you see that he has double quotes there? To like it's it's not automatic like we would see. You actually have to include the delimiter as well as a string character. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this, everything after the arc, after the command line um, is inside, uh, uh, we put it here. And now you can see here uh, the, the um, header, they are inside double code, comma, value, they are inside. So these are the ones. Um, but the values here, you can see we just use reference. We said whatsoever in the value in position two, uh, put it, uh, uh, it will be here, whatsoever in the first, put it. So, what I really um, don't understand is that you can see here where he referenced to, we, he put like this at the top, and now here you put this at the top. So what he's saying here is that you can see comma here. So what yes. is this comma is the one that is telling this is um, uh, comma separated but, uh, file, Correct. CSV. Correct. So it is so, a delimiter, it is the Yes, character. exactly. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's why here you, you can see value. We have delimiter. And also here, print this guy two, print one. That is a position, but delimit them with this. So when we run this guy, it will save here. So here now we have this FV, uh, the uh, CSV. Now when we have but um, FV, CSV. So we can see here now we have this file, um, FB, um, CSV, the value here. And uh, this is basically comma separated and uh, we can use CSV look um, function. Um, we have that uh, to look at, um, yeah. So basically we can see now it, it turns now to CSV file. So um, what the main idea as I told you is basically trying to see how we can plot the, um, do some kind of uh, data monging and uh, do some stuff. Now, finally, you can use this data to float. So here we have this count, this count, and float this value. So he said, okay, let's use this command, which is called rush. So um, to get a little bit on rush, we can see this um, here, maybe. So, <laughs> I don't know what this rush command. So here, I think in TLD, I don't have the rush command. So um, he didn't explain it, but um, uh, he said it will be discussed detail in chapter seven, right? So Got this it. is basically a command that can use, uh, I think, yeah, to plot. And now here, when we have this, um, Yeah, so here you float x, um, what will be the x is the value here. What will be the y um, will be the count, right? So this is plot, x is this is the value, y what is, and geom is column. So the just like in R where we use the geom, um, what kind of this? So we use this column bar, um, uh, column high as whatsoever. So, um, and finally, um, for the file that it will what the height two means Shamsuddin. um so here we said the column uh, actually um yeah we have height here actually not sure uh what height is here um i wonder yes. if it's just a way of uh setting the 
I don't know. She hmm. second B. Two. Jiom called height two. Yeah, he said hi. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, after the height we have here, two here. Um, maybe do you know what that means? Maybe the height is uh, depicted by the count, the second column, but then I can't imagine they'd say two and it wouldn't be dollar two or something. I don't know. The second column of the CSV is supposed to indicate uh, the five, the high, the, the, the frequency count. You know what I mean? So it's kind of, it is nothing but a frequency chart, right? Mm -hmm. Because the second column, and of course, in, uh, in, in ggplot, there's easy ways to, you can say start identity or something like that. There's just different ways to indicate that. Uh, it is a it is a frequency plot. Maybe this is how he is letting you know that it's the frequencies on the height or on the y axis. I I think, but having said that, I don't not sure. Yeah. So the thing is, like, um, uh, he, uh, what I like you know about this his book is like he will do something, but he does not explain it and say it will see we will see it in chapter. So here, for example, he introduced the rush. And he said it will be in chapter five. It would be nice if he can just explain some parameters how it is used, but he just used it at his says, and uh, you are expecting to go back to uh, to understand it better. In see how interesting this is, uh, Shamsuddin. Remember how this grammar of graphics, which you know yes. Lee, Lee Wilkinson, he developed. I mean, or rather, he's the father of this whole thing, right? And of course, uh, Hadley actually took his book and developed the entire GG plot. Uh, to library for that. But see how geome is like used even in something as basic as, uh, <laughs> I don't know, is, is the rush from AWK package? I don't know where, can you see where the rush uh, library is stored, uh, Shamsuddin, if it is uh, standalone or if it is coming from AWK? Mm -hmm. The command, I don't know. Like what I'm saying is it is, this geome concept must have existed for many, 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 many years. And you know, mm -hmm. it's it's so prevalent in even other basic command line tools. Amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No worries, Um, I'm trying to look at, um... okay. Yeah, I mean, rush. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is cool. I mean, even the plot looks like GG plot. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like uh, the. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but um, one thing I found out is like now we have um, actually used this command rush and we plot this. This is fb.png. Um, but when I try to display um, uh, the PNG here, you can see here the command display is not working on my, and I'm in the Docker container. It's supposed to work, but when I run, it will say um, command not display, no display found command. Oh, so, um, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I tried to find out to install if it is not there, but it's supposed to be there since it's inside the Docker image, everything is there. So maybe yeah. I don't know whether something is wrong with my machine. Um, uh yeah so um this mark new mark maybe they have some weird stuff that doesn't fit to the normal stuff so yeah so that's uh so basically this is some one of the thing he discussed first in how to do some transformation just trying to and he actually made mention that um uh, uh you see a lot of other thing that he will not explain but uh, he will explain them later so that's the then the next thing he discusses is what is called plain text. Um, so uh, he prefer, or he said he just start discussing about plain text because plain text is something that is basically um, everyone use uh, and um, it has a lot of advantage. It can be open anywhere and uh, yeah, so just like, plain text over the other like uh, CSV. That isn't enough for me to start with plain text. The other format that I discussed in this chapter, CSV JSON, uh, indeed also plain text. For now, I assume that the plain text has no clear tabular structure. So yeah, so here he just want to start working with the plain text to see how um, we can work with that. So the first stuff he start discussing is about uh, filtering. 
So, and the filtering, there are many uh, kind of filtering uh, based on location. So let's assume here, we have this line. Um, so if we look at this, this is a sequence and uh, here we can see here, uh, we are generating a sequence of uh, line of to 10 and now here this. So this is just a line. Uh, we have line one, we, are, we just uh, generate a sequence. So with this F, so let's look at this. Um, TLDR uh, seek. So if we see this um, TLDR, um, this, uh, yeah. So if you look at this, this format, seek, um, uh, yep. Seek with something like a dash F, it allow us to uh, format what you want the output. So for example, seek dash F, these will actually um, run sequence from five to 20 and with sequence of three, um, but it will actually put this here. So more or less the same thing here, we have line, you can see this um, percentage G, it means put these numbers um, one to 10, line one, line two, line three, line four, line five. So let's, let me show this one as an example as well. So if we put this, we can see here, uh, from this, we can see here, we have, um, uh, uh, it put the five, um, it put eight, something like that. So here you can see here, zero, four, G, it means um, we want the number to be in this format, zero, 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 that is four, uh, zero, four zeros. And now here, whatsoever is the G here, it's replaced with five, can you see that? Um, so this is something like um, uh, something, yeah. So this is what we have now. So we want to do some filtering. Now, for you to do filtering, um, there are many ways, as he explained. Um, let's go back to the example. Yeah, so we have this. So for us to do filtering, there are many ways to do that. As we know in uh, R, we can use head to do uh, filtering. Uh, so here you can use SAID, you can use ALK, all these uh, uh, command that can be used. So before we go to that, um, let's look at this command SAID. So we can see here what they said, SAID is basically uh, edit text in a scriptable manner. So it allows you to edit text so because we are working on a plain text, it allows you to edit text. You can, for example, replace the occurrence, you can edit text, edit, you know, delete or some stuff like that. Um, I yeah. think it's basically the string-based commands of the command line, like all the S probably exactly. stands for string, exactly. something string. Exactly, exactly. If you look at this one, uh, um, you, you already know that, uh, this stuff today, I know. So a versatile programming language um, for working on files. So uh, for example, if we have this, print the fifth column. So here I'll print the column, fifth column, and you provide the file name. So everything that follows the alf, we put in this comma, and this is what is gonna happen inside it. And we put the last as we saw here uh, previously. So these are the commands um, in a nutshell that we see. So now um, this one here first, um, basically what it does, oh no. So what this one here, remember we already have our lines. We save it here, T lines, we save it in line. Head three, it means give out the uh, uh, the first three line, right? So the something we can use this said um, as well, comma. So we can see here more or less the same, but this one actually um, we need from the first one to the um, top three. So I don't know what this P means, um, do you know what this P means? I do not know, Shamsuddin, sorry. Okay, so um, he used this P. Um, I don't know why the attachment of the P. Okay, so basically that's that. Um, but we all can also use our um, command um, to do that. We can see that. Um, so what this NR refers to is the total number of input record seen so far. So uh, number of uh, record, input record we want to see uh, here we use this. So if you look at, if we go further, we will see that uh, the out command is using this if wants to input or output. So here it means uh, the number of 
one one is three so we can see here for me the head is more straightforward <laughs> you know what i mean what do you think i agree no i totally agree i think awk is kind of basic right it's just for uh, limiting how much you want to see and how much you don't want to see whereas sed seems to be more of this string comparison and actually looking for character patterns mm -hmm. okay right so um so here, for example, here we are specifying we want to see, I mean, or less than or equals three, meaning uh, the first three, right? So if we change this one here. Okay. Um, so we can also use the um the these commands also to see, for example, uh the uh uh the last part. For example, we all know there is a tell command that actually shows the last three lines here. Uh, but you can also use seed and these to show the last three, but tell is much faster. So as we say here, for me, even head to see the top one. So here you can also use the tell um, uh, to see, uh, to do the last one. But also here we have the said here on 3D. Um, hmm, we have this one as well. So here we can see that the lines um, show, for example, this one um, here. So we can see here, uh, we said one 3D um, on like this one, where we have uh, the argument. And I think P and D mean exclusive, inclusive, or something like that. Some sequence seems like it. You know, like that D means everything but one to three, and mm -hmm. P means everything one to three. So one is inclusive, and the other one is excluding, perhaps. Yeah, but also we can see here, uh, if we look at this one here, where we are using the, uh, giving us the top, they use this argument, N, but here where we are using, like, uh, there is no this argument in this. Can you see this one? I sure can. Yes, you're right. You're right. So I'm not sure what um, this. So it also. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's a, I think it's more the, yeah, I, yeah, I see what you're saying, Shamsa, yeah. then. Yeah, so, but what you are saying as well, look at this, we have this argument, but we have this P, um, one, two, three, and we have this P, and they give us the same thing. So maybe something similar to along the line you are saying. Um, I think that uh, that P, that character, that exclamation P, right, Shamsuddin, I feel like it is a not, you know, the, some of these special characters, mm -hmm. they can indicate uh, different uh, uh, inclusion, inclusion or exclusion parameters. So that ex, that exclamation yeah, mark is normally used as a not or a negation or so, something like yeah. that. So for example, here, it means give us this. That is from one to three, right? So here we have Correct. the lines one to three. But Correct. here we uh, negate it um, one yeah. to three, but we negate it. But yeah. I, I thought like the negation becomes like here at the beginning, <laughs> but it just... <laughs> The negation comes, um, yeah, um, Pavitra, I, this one, but I didn't even think about this negation, um, but uh, yeah. Actually, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I think negation is a wrong word, Shamsuddin, in case people are listening to this. I feel like negation is that tilde character. Normally that is oh, used yes. for, mm -hmm. but uh, exclamation might be, I don't know. I mean, I think maybe we shouldn't say anything in case people who are listening to this get confused. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so what can know. we say about it? Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So also, um, there is something here you made mention. Um. Noted that the tell we use, for example, um. Uh, the positive here we say plus four. So tell. Remember the tells tells us. Okay, if we use tell and we just say three, it will just give us the last three, right? Tell this and three to give us the last three but we can use tell in different ways here we say tell um it we it is not telling us to give us the last four right but when we use positive here plus four it means start from from the four to the end all like this um i don't know if you add more light on this is if you understand what i'm saying I do understand, Shamsuddin. I think the plus, the presence of that plus is making a difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So this is what he's trying to say here. Notice that the teller will have spe uh, specified the number of lines plus one, 
think of it as the line you want to start printing. Removing the last three lines can be done with this. So yeah, removing the last three lines as well. Um, so also similar to tell. So here we say tell n plus four. Start from the beginning from four till the end. So here is a tell, right? Um, we have plus four. But if you look at head, head has also positive, right? It's, I mean, by virtually it's positive. When we said head minus n and uh, dash n three, it gives us the top three line. What about if we said head dash n dash three or negative uh, three? True, true, yes. So when we said dash three, this means that start from the beginning, but n don't reach the last three guys. So the last three guys are 10, nine and eight. So it will just start the beginning. Uh, I don't know if you understand the comparison I want to make with the tail and the head, or you want to add something. No, no, I totally get it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's def definitely capable of certain things once you know <laughs> what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Right, so that's um, uh, how he discussed about the head and also, okay, um, let's continue. Um, so you can print specific lines using say these, so you can also speak, print specific lines using these ones. So for example, here we have lines here. So this one is printing some specific line. So four to six P, um, all like here, um, I think it's still the same here, right? Z my three P. Yes, yes, oh, it is. Yes. Yeah. Um, this one also um is still the same. Um, so here is using this N R that we saw previously. So this basically try to bring just like using as as they said this is programming language. So here they are trying to compare uh from this four to this six. Uh, print this line. Um, so here we have the head and tail where we can combine the two, right? Um, using the head and tail. You can also print old lines. So using um, said SCD. So what he meant is that instead for you to specify sequence of number, you can say print old line. So here we said one, this tilde two, uh, meaning printing um, old lines. So uh, just keeping one, start from one and uh, with the second one. You can also print um, similar way for even numbers. Um, so here we have zero to two tilde, it will print even numbers. Um, I'm not sure um, if you understand why, uh, or the rationale behind why one to two means even odd, um, odd numbers and this one means even numbers. I don't know if you can, you, you have something on this. Um, Pavitra? Yes, no, no, I got it, I got it, I'm watching, yeah. Okay, um, so here I was saying um, we can use this say to print um, odd numbers, but this is how to print odd numbers. One, um, these two, so this will print odd numbers, one, three, five, but um, also we can use ALK um, to print modulo two, using modular two, so modular two means for in the odd number. So this is all print odd number using seed and this, but we cannot use the head um, in this way just to provide to print the odd number unless we uh, do this uh, something. But also he said uh, that can be done with even numbers as well. Um, he said, this is how to do the even numbers, but for ALK we can use uh, to add first one and do the modulo. So what, what I'm saying is that here we have one is to two, like zero to is two. Um, do you understand the rationale why this is like printing this command is meaning even and this command meaning odd? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's um, uh, uh, based on location. So here we are saying print location, uh, odd number, those that are odd, they are all location, print the uh, last six, print the top six, they are all based. On. But you can print based on pattern. Uh, so given a text here, we have this um, Alice um, card, Alice here. Um, yeah, so this is, you can see this is a text called Alice that contains some stuff. 
um, but we can actually use based on some pattern to uh, actually uh, do some stuff. So if we look at this here, uh, we use something called grep. Um, so this is a grep that allow us to grep this content, this whatsoever. So look at the file content. So we said, okay, grep, I chapter. What this means is that grep anything that start with a uh, chapter. So you can see the I options where that the matching should be case sensitive here. So whatsoever is chapter. So you can see it's a chapter, 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 chapter. So grep, meaning filter or select um, something that start with chapter. So here, that's why we have this chapter. But you can also specify a regular expression, for example, if you want to print out the heading that start with um, the. So this means that uh, um, we want to print the chapter again. So anything here. Um, uh, so Fabitra, you remember regular expression? So this is regular expression, meaning, uh, hello, Fabitra, are you there? Yes, yes, I yeah, I, I do know regular expression terms. Okay, so here we can see this is um uh, regular expression, but here we can see it's not regular expression. It's just like a simple text, graph anything that start with chapter. Um, I means um immaterial whether it's small, so you print this one. But here we said okay, um here we are concerned about um if it is capital, so that's why we didn't use I. But uh, print anything that has chapter and is followed by the the. So this is it. So you can see here, um, chapter, right? And this, um, what do you call this? Um, uh, uh, expression meaning anything uh, here, right? Um, so yeah, that's correct. So you can see here, the, the, this. So this is, uh, we can see here, we are grouping based on patterns. So grip is tool that can allows you to uh, actually get some stuff based on pattern that you specify. So yeah, so that's about the press. Not that you have to specify the E option in order to enable regular expression. So here you can see, as I said, this is not regular expression. It's just like um, uh, normal grep. Um, uh, but if we want to use regular expression, we need to specify these, telling whatever follows is regular expression. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, no, <laughs> we have time. time is, uh, Okay, we have based on randomness as well. So we can basically uh, oh, uh, do some stuff based on randomness. So here you can see here, we have sick, we create these lines, uh, 1000 lines, but we pipe and say sample. So this sample is basically a command that tells us, give us a sample 1% uh, in each. So here you can see um, that, uh, uh, what do you say, the percentage, uh, the main purpose of the sample is to get a subset of the data by outputting only certain percentage, uh, one line uh, on a line by line basis. So you can see here, I mean, 0.01% uh, we want. So for each line, he output the percent. So basically a random sample, taking a sample, um, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, we are indeed time. Uh, um, I think, sir, Shamsuddin, I think we can continue this in the next one. And if you want, even I can present part of it if you haven't done the entire chapter. Okay, yeah. So uh, um, I think we can stop here maybe. Uh, yes, because grep, I think, you know, once we get into grep, we need to kind of spend some time doing it. So I think mm -hmm. we should devote another hour to that. Okay, cool. So what do you suggest? Yeah, let's do this, continue this chapter next week. And if, okay, you haven't, sure. if you haven't prepared the entire chapter, I can do this part onwards. Okay, fine. Okay, yeah. so you want to continue with this part. Yeah, okay, fine. So 5.3.2, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Got it. Okay, yeah, so you want me to take that up? Yes, yeah, sure, I can leave it for you. If you okay, uh, Okay. sounds good. Thank you, Shamsuddin. I will, I will present next week. Okay, so see you next week. Thank you. Thank very you much. and uh, so much. Thank you so okay. much and see you next week. Okay, bye bye.